Ogi talked about last time, uh, humanity is on a mission to clear all distortions as made in God's image. So like I said, that's that's kind of what the human template um, is for because we are the um, made in God's image. We, we The human form, the human template is the one um, God, uh, God having an experience in this kind of dense form. So, um, and, you know, it's, it's, it, it doesn't mean that the other galactic, galactic beings aren't less than or anything, but um, it, that, is, that is the human template and what we were designed for. And that's why um, the earth is so uh, important um, in not just our galaxy, but in what we would call our, the omniverse. Um, so yeah, we realigned to, on 222 2022 realigned to the cosmos before any distortions began. Uh, and again, like I was talking about, we have to first get us out of 3D consciousness um, and fall in the parasitic systems. And I think we're just finding out more and more just how parasitic our um, 3D systems really have been um so the you know steps have been laid to support this monumental change uh and all these resets that have happened the language of numbers of vector codes god's infinite calculus um so the underlying language of god behind what we see um has all changed now uh, and it's like a new alpha and omega cycle um, it's a resetting of the cosmic clock and now the activation of the new time vector codes are activating or un unlocking. So our soul is also reset to this new cosmic clock and um, it's in a new cycle that the new potentials and possibilities exist for that uh, cosmic cycle. Uh, and so again, if, if there are some humans or beings, even low consciousness beings still trying to um, uh, use old and outdated time vector codes and fractal codes, then uh, it's not going to, it's not gonna work anymore. So it's still gonna try and that's what kind of creates the chaos in the world. Uh, as well and again it's tempting to say why can't we just you know delete all of it and just start fresh and, it, and it's because we wouldn't be able to we wouldn't be able to survive either because we're our physical bodies and our physical um, senses are uh, reliant on um, some of these 3d structures but sammy sammy has said I might have mentioned it before that um, even with the what they even with some of these um, like around technology these systems that they're that they have laid down thinking that they're going to then control humanity like you know like the like let's say the digital passports and things um, and the the foundation for uh, cryptocurrency. So those foundations are kind of there, um, you know, so that we can use, continue to use our technology that we know. And Sammy keeps showing me that we're going to hijack the hijack those and actually take it into in a different direction than what they're um, trying to take us into. So, you know, we'll see. This is um, again, we have to see how this all unfolds, but that's the general sense um, and what Sammy, uh, Sam, Samantha has been saying. So, so the earth is also resetting and realigning to the uh, point of origin. And, you know, I'll show um, some images around that later. And I guess a little water. Um, so again, from last week, just a review, the original universe. So this was the first original universe, so to speak. Um, and then uh, how it divided into um, 
become nine original primordial universes, as I would call them. And, uh, and the interesting thing about this pattern and what it does is it's uh, like our fertilized egg, you know, when we begin cell division from a, a zygote, um, you know, it splits into two, um, two and then two creates four and then four creates eight, you know, so it's kind of follows a similar pattern, except here we have this original one that stays intact. Um, and then, uh, so I numbered them to keep, kind of keep track. So the sixth and seventh universes, primordial universes kind of left the group. And again, at that level, it's not like there was any war or fighting or anything like that. It was a very neutral kind of, all right, you want to try that, explore that um, as a source um, and then left of the group. And that's the beginning of um, where distorted consciousness uh, started from what um, I've been shown. And so this one universe, um, the, primor the first primordial universe before it even split off um, within it, um, it was like these 12 expressions. I mean, again, I'm not sure what the right word is or what, because uh, this is bigger than my mind can really, you know, understand or take in. Um, and so these would be like the galactic suns uh, that we, you know, have talked about. Um, so it's like, it becomes um, a more of a multifaceted consciousness, let's say. And um, so then intention and, uh, and a will and a desire is more, um, it becomes more refined. And there are, and from what I've been shown or it feels like is that these 12 um, initial expressions began the first uh, 12 base languages of, of source. Uh, so those would be like language of numbers and language of um, uh, mathematics, you know, I think, you know, um, it may, may even be beyond that for as far as, uh, as far as I know, but um, somehow it began these 12 base languages um, of source. And then so from that, what feels like happened, it was able to then uh, divide into those uh, nine um, universes. So those the sixth and seventh primordial universes leave sort of the main group, let's say. Um, and then the remaining that leaves seven. Uh, and if you, you know, if you think about it, this is where these numbers of 12 and nine may come from. So nine was like a complete group. Um, these 12 expressions. And so that might be why we keep seeing these numbers as significant of the, the nine and the 12. And then the seven remaining of seven becomes a significant number, you know, as well. So, um, you know, over eons of cycles of creation, I would say, I wouldn't, wouldn't say it's time. Um, then the seven coalesce and they become the um, seven higher heavens. And um, so they disconnect and then distortions. Oh, and so when they disconnected, then um, they weren't, uh, that, that lack of communication with the original source, so to speak, they're not um, replenishing and updating. And uh, so beginning distortions. Um, so everything that's happened now leading up to this is to align to that original point before any distortions happen. Um, so that in a sense, um, we can uncreate uh, all those distortions. Yeah, um, there was something I was thinking about as well. I can't remember right now. Anyway, so um, trying to give an overview of this um, really immense process. Uh, so there's the nine to leave. These become the seven higher heavens. And so 
um, it's making sense to me now why Sammy would say, well, she's from the, you know, the third galactic sun, which is like within here. Uh, the third one is this one. Is that right? Yeah, third. Oh, the second one, she's from the second galactic sun. And why she then she's also from the seventh heaven, you know, so um, uh, these remained kind of intact. And um, it's this seems feels like it's some kind of hub in the omniverse. Uh, so if you imagine that this is our 12 dimensional universe, that would be here. Um, just trying to get sense of scale. This is the triune arc, which is the 16th, 17th, and 18th quote dimensions, and not even really dimensions. And then this is the 15th dimension, 14th dimension, and this is the 13th dimension, which is part of the, um, the, the triune arc. So this um, is uh, like a really just a small snapshot. And obviously this is more this is going on over here. So multiverse to me is, um, you know, maybe within here, omniverse is like, like all of it, the all that is everything beyond even our imagination, um, however many dimensions and fields of uh, creation there are. So it's way, way out there. Um, so now this represents the emanation of the, the nine primordial universes before any of them left. Um, so again, taking us back to the point of origin. And then from this field, um, from these nine, they uh, emanated out, or let's say like a representative. And these are these nine omniversal beings that are now here um, uh, supporting this continued connection and um, supporting the uncreation of distortions. And even, I would say, taking back, um, taking fallen entities or dark spirits, as you might call them, um, taking them, you know, back to where, I don't know, but, you know, they're, they're, uh, they seem to be dealing with those uh, entities um, as well, uh, to rehabilitate, to, I don't know, I can't even imagine. And I feel like it's, some way it's not my concern, you know, we just allow some of these to happen. Uh, where did my little cursor go? There it is, okay. Um, so again, another view then before the distortions, there's the nine before any of them left. So again, now it's like accessing into the original point before any distortions. And there's this uh, 36th dimensional, quote, dimensional sun. Uh, this one feels like it's disrupting and causing um, things to be shaken up so that distortions can be brought to the surface, anything that does not belong or is not in alignment with um, the omnipresence of the God source uh, is being shaken up to be uh, taken out. And this 36 dimensional sun, then it feels like it has like a magnetic pull to draw back distortions um, and also to kind of keep us aligned to what it is that we're trying to do so we don't quote forget, you know, so even with the new kids being born now, it feels like they're being born with, you know, their third eye open and their high heart or their eighth chakra activated and open. So it doesn't seem to be a level of forgetfulness um, that we were uh, born into. So knock on wood, yeah, let's keep it that way. Um, so this is, uh, yeah, and I, this is again our 12, what I would call our 12 dimensional universe and I just made it green, this different color to indicate that now we're in really a t different 12 dimensional universe that was created by the 12 um, galactic suns and 
I think that's why uh, they said they're the, the creators of our dimensionalized system, even the consciousness um, of, of the one uh, in different sort of expressions. Yeah, it's complex, um, but uh, it's um, sort of my approximation and describing what's, what's happening. Any questions about that? Uh, so here's a closer look at this uh, 36 dimensional blue sun and this 30 dim the six dimensional coral sun. One of the things that also happened um, over the last, well, I would say three weeks or so, is this um, emanation that surrounded our fifth harmonic universe um 13th 14th and 15th dimensions uh resetting it reconfiguring it i'm not sure what the right word is uh but making then that omniversal field um more easily accessible for that information and light codes and mathematic codes all kinds of codes to uh come through it also seems to be stimulating people to connect to um, other aspects of their higher dimensional selves. So um, like an eighth, ninth dimensional aspect of yourself or a galactic expression, um, a higher galactic expression. Uh, so it may be like an, um, say I'm connected to her, an Andromedan aspect. Uh, of her oversoul, um, someone else to a sort of a feline Pleiadian um, aspect. I know my aspect looks very different. It's like, it doesn't even look human. Um, so the, these, uh, this is stimulating um, us to connect to different aspects of self. Uh, and it may, it may be part of in, even in that omniversal field um, a soul aspect of yourselves that uh, you are connecting to. So lots and lots of changes taking place. Um, so, so one of the ways that we're being supported, this is Issa, uh, a dragon of the platonic solids. And some of you may know that uh, the platonic solids are the base geometries that make up our reality. So again, um, some of these aren't going, quote, going away, but we're just recovering them because, like I was saying in the beginning, these were hijacked to create a, a, a phantom matrix that we were um, stuck in. And the thing is, even these beings that created this false matrix, they still had to use some original source um, information, including the, the geometries, because otherwise we wouldn't be able to exist, you know? So even like our numbers were hijacked because they had to use some base basis um, to be able to, to create. So I think that's why, you know, it can be kind of confusing when we're talking about uh, these different shapes and geometries and you're like, well, they still look the same. So, you know, you're using, we're using the same geometries, um, but how does that relate to being hijacked or fallen? And um, that, was one of, that was one of the ways. So it's been a very intricate system uh, multidimensionally that was created to create a 3D illusion um, that we've been, that we've existed in. So, so Issa, this dragon is now replenishing the, um, uh, those five platonic solids. And this um, dodecahedron is, is important because it um, actually looks similar to uh, it's sort of a basis for these those buckyballs um, that were used to clog up access points into the dark matter um, fields. So um, if you saw my post in uh, Patreon, uh, 
you know, several days ago, last week or so, um, that uh, I was witnessing the, the, you know, these black buckyballs now kind of being lifted out and um, leaving. And so now this uh, true organic dodecahedron, which um, represents ether, the element of ether, uh, can return. And it, the ether element is very important in the uh, uh, other elements working um, in the organic way that they're meant to uh, to function in. And remember that um, Ophicus, the 13th zodiac sign, uh, is bringing back the element of ether as well. So all of this is coming together now. Um, and going to be replenishing the earth with uh, new life force currents. Because uh, when we were only aware of the four elements, the extreme duality and extreme polarity was being supported. So when you bring back ether, it um, brings back the sense of neutrality, the inner neutrality, the balance of all aspects of being, the masculine, the feminine, the electric and the magnetic, you know, the proton and the electron, all these things can come into more of a neutral balance. And so, um, and when we can be experiencing more of this neutrality in our, our physical bodies, and we are connecting to our soul in a completely different way and now connecting to our oversoul and uh, the avatar aspect of ourselves and even the Rishik aspect, which is um, in that 13th, 14th and 15th dimension, then um, we can really begin co-creating in that balance. We can co-create in uh, neutrality, the sense of competition is eased. And um, then we can really live from our soul and gift the world with what our soul gifts are meant to, uh, to do. And we'll find um, a, a more organic planetary balance. You know, so that's, that's the idea where we're, where we're going with all of that. Um, so Sam had shown me a few years ago that the earth was divided into these 12 regions with the dodecahedron. And I wasn't really sure. Um, I thought, well, does that mean that, that there are autists in these 12 different regions? Um, and obviously this is not to scale. I don't know if that one region, you know, encompasses all of, uh, North America here, but, um, uh, I was, guided uh, about a month ago to this other person. She lives in South Africa that I know that she does grid work. So I was guided to reach out to her and say, hey, I feel like, you know, we're supposed to get together and do some grid work. And um, we began working with this um, dodecahedron. And um, basically what we discovered, and it's still in kind of incomplete uh, the information, but what we discovered was that um, uh, the earth being divided up into these 12 regions within this dodecahedron is that uh, there's these areas in each of these dodecahedrons that accesses um, into zero point. And so um, some of the zero point is accessing into the element of ether um, so it's not, it sounds like there's four of those around the planet. And then um, there are uh, the other eight remaining, two of each of uh, those elements of air, water, fire, and earth. Um, and so by accessing zero point, they're going to be um, drawing in uh, life force currents of those particular elements. And then around the earth, then we're gonna blend, um, you know, there'll be a blending and a balancing 
But the exciting thing is, you know, a couple of them being in the ocean, we noticed that a couple of them are in the ocean themselves. So then replenishing the ocean life, ocean, the waters, you know, in general. Um, and the other interesting one that we uh, discovered that was one of those zero points is in Ukraine. And we're like, wow, that's, you know, look what's going on in Ukraine. Uh, and the Ukrainian one, um, the element is, is fire. And that one is supposed to um, fully activate uh, in the nine nine. Um, and uh, usually we associate right, the const um, constellation Leo as fire. So in the 12 tropical astrological system, Nine nine is not in Leo, but if you look at the thirteen zodiac signs um, on nine nine, uh, it is in Leo. So you know it'll be interesting, and and the element of fire is important for. I mean that's really igniting uh, life force, you know. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see. What happens now? How and when all this will be taking place, and um, when we'll be accessing all the elements? I'm not. I'm not really sure. Um, it feels like it's gonna really be take on momentum after um, six six of this year, and so six six is gonna be an interesting portal this year because it'll be a six 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 um, date wise from the Western calendar uh, perspective but anyway um this is you know this is going to be interesting and so you know you get the sense that with these elements or a renewed um replenishing kind of access to these uh essential elements that supports life on the planet uh that um we may actually be stimulated to clean the earth uh, sooner. Um, and it will certainly stimulate us um, to, I think, even cleanse our bodies, because again, our bodies are made of earth matter. Uh, and but we'll also be much more, I think, supported, make it easier to cleanse our bodies of, of toxins and things. So it'll be interesting to see how this uh, plays out. But you know, this is another kind of exciting um, piece that's coming up now. Um, any questions up to now or uh, no? Um, so this was a, an image that I drew a couple of weeks ago. I um, started feeling all kinds of activity from Sammy, you know, and I just got was getting really hot. So I started seeing these clocks that were all reset uh look like they were set to zero zero and so um when i drew it out i realized uh this symbol really looks like a taurus the symbol for taurus and um so which indicates earth and um again since we're realigning to the cosmos the original point of the cosmos then um everything is being stimulated and shaken to uh, align itself to that origin and this desire to purify and reset everything. So the Earth, um, the constellation Taurus, we're in, I think, are we in Taurus now? Or, or we're just headed into Taurus, aren't we? According to the 12 um, tropical system working with the 12 zodiac signs. So on 4.30 is a new moon and 5.1 is like another one of those alignments to the uh, 222, 2022, because the numbers are um, similar. Five plus one is six and then the 2022 is a six. So um, it's also a solar eclipse, which, you know, when I was listening to one astrologer, she was saying the solar eclipses are like like a rebirth so it feels like um the earth will reset and begin its new cosmic 
clock um, after that uh, solar eclipse alignment. But if we also then look at from the perspective of the 13 zodiac signs, because on April 30th, we would still be in, in the 13 zodiac system, we're still in Aries. But on, um, we enter uh, in the 13 zodiac system, we enter Taurus, I think on like, April, no, no, May, 15th, uh, 16th, right around there. And that's another um, full moon, right? Yeah, 430 is a new moon and solar eclipse. 516 is a full moon and a lunar eclipse. So, uh, and it's in Taurus in the 13th zodiac system. So it's all, um, I can't verbalize the significance of that, but when you look, start to look at that, it, it feels very significant. So I think we're gonna have more um, shakeups. Uh, and Sam had been saying that May, there is gonna be another level of uh, uprising. Now, I don't know what that means. I don't know, that doesn't necessarily mean that there's gonna be violence and things like that. But, um, you know, I almost hope that the Chinese um, people will begin to um, rise up, you know, those poor people over there. But anyway, um, it's, it's some interesting things to uh, begin to uh, take into consideration and just kind of be an observer of what happens around those dates. Um, any other questions about that? or um, I don't see anything in the chat, okay. All right, so all of that also then, cosmologically, there's all these realignments, galactically realignments. Yeah, and that's the other thing that um, I feel is happening is that uh, this alignment to the origin of, let's say, quote, creation as we would you know, imagine it, um, is also going to shake up our galaxy. It's not just uh, our planet here, but I mean, you know, looking at that, we're talking about these universes and uh, uh, at all dimensional levels. So this is going to uh, shake up um, even our galaxy and galactic beings, low consciousness beings in other parts of our, our galaxy even. So um, for the human, then we're realigning, we're uh, the original quote human template or a really an upgraded human template is um, is here and uh, you know uh, this human then has that template of the 7d Gaian template the 5d Taran template and the 3d uh, kind of human template you know the form as well so um, uh, it begs the question of uh, that we we're going to be redefining as a collective is what actually does it mean to be human because we have um, talked about the fact or other sages wisdom keepers have talked about the fact that the human is a uh, it's like a vehicle is like a vessel for the soul um, to utilize for a, a period of time but um, we're really going to be asking a deeper question, what really does it mean to be uh, an expression of God um, in, in, this, in this human form? What does it mean? What, what does that feel like? And that um, really coming into a deeper knowing and understanding it, that the human form, the human body and all its what we call genes and body parts, body systems, and organs have a, uh, a godly kind of function to it. So even our sensory system um, is uh, uh, a means of communicating with, with God's source. You know, that's what Sammy had shared with me a few years ago is that she, um, that she uses her sensory system to communicate with God, because uh, if God is 
experiencing through these bodies and wants to have a human experience, then um, of course there's this two way process that needs to happen that God can experience what we're experiencing in these human bodies. And how do we experience what's happening um, at all levels is through our sensory um, systems, you know, our uh, more than our five senses. So we're going to have a uh, new census, you know, coming online and uh, the 12 cranial nerves plays, um, seems to play a vital role in um, developing our nervous system uh, and connecting it to our bodies to be a, a, a fully engaged uh, godlike being um, in this human body. So um, then also, I mean, like as many of you know, there's been a lot of talk about the gut. So yeah, connection to our gut and um, that that's uh, like a sensory organ itself, you know, and provides lots of information uh, to our bodies and uh, in communication with, with obviously the brain. Uh, this part represents the nadial complex, which is uh, connected to our light body. And so our light body has like a nervous system as well. So um, we're connecting to the light body uh, nervous system and we'll really become a totally different human, a much more sentient and awake human and uh, with multidimensional access and multidimensional awareness and also our physical awareness because the earth itself is part of the cosmos. Um, the earth is a cosmic body um, and all life on the planet also has a cosmic uh, function. So, and this is an interesting platform now that's also activated. Uh, I'll be talking a little bit more about that in the next slide. Um, so this platform that we, uh, in the other slide that you saw, uh, it's a platform. So the golden ring behind is uh, uh, like, 20, like a 20 second dimension. And uh, this ruby connects to the 18th dimension sapphire to the 19th dimension, the diamond to the 20th dimension, so to speak, and um, the, the emerald to the 21st quote dimension. And um, yeah, beyond the 18th dimension is when we're getting connecting into the seven higher heavens. So 19, 20, 21 up to 25th, what we would call quote dimensions. And they're, they're not really dimensions. They're, I don't know what you call them kinds of these vast fields. Um, and so uh, this platform um, is also and putting out these uh, scalar waves um, that uh, is going to be activating um, our, our uh, genetics as well. So yeah, there's a lot there and these uh, images are really, I mean, really intense. Um, so any comments or questions about this so far before we I think we get into the meditation? It's, it's beautiful. That's all. I just let out a whoa. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. It's a lot of stuff. That's all yeah. I can say. Yeah. At some level, it makes a whole lot of sense. It's beautiful to yeah, I hope so. You know, just it may not be exactly the words that I'm describing, but I mean, I think the overall sense is to try and get wrap our minds around the idea that um, everything's been reset so that we can evolve and ascend into um, a state where uh, polarity and fallen consciousness no longer exists, you know, um, and that's what we're trying to do. And the, the omniverse, the all that is, has opened floodgates of access points, you know, to, uh, to do that. So that's my sort of limited 3D human way of understanding that. 
So that's three chats here. Let me see. Um, let's see. There's three more. Who removed the mutation cube? We, oh, yeah, we uh, answered that already. Okay. Uh, makes sense to my soul. Somebody on their iPhone, yeah. Makes sense to my soul, eases my soul. Thank you. Yeah, just so that, you know, we kind of get a sense of with all the craziness going on in the, in the outer world that um, there has been a plan all along and it hasn't been quite, re wasn't quite revealed to us until uh, I think really more this year, you know? So this all, all, everything has been leading up to this point now and um, it's like full steam ahead now. We hope all your lives are uh, as joy-filled and as grace-filled as possible during these wild, wild times. <laughs> Take care.